Thank you very much, sir. Your words of conviction are what pushes us, push us ahead to work harder and harder to make this university a world-class one. Now I'd like to request our guest of honor, Dr. M. K. Chaudhary, sir, who is the Vice Chancellor of Tejpur University, to kindly address the gathering. Most distinguished guest of this function, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, our most beloved leader in science and technology, an exemplar least talk about this better. So your presence to this region time and again inspires us. And we say this from the core of our heart. And we pray a very long active life of yours. The distinguished dignitaries on the dais, the chairman of this institution, this university, Mr. Hawk, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. P.J. Rao, an old friend of mine from the days of R.R.L. Jorhat Nest. The Dean of Foreign Affairs of IIT Guwahati and an erstwhile colleague of mine, Professor Mishra, and other distinguished dignitaries on the dais, most respected principals of the Northeast regions, including Assam, other distinguished guests, many of them are known to me by name, by face, by both ladies and gentlemen and my dear students. Once I was asked to come over here, I was wondering upon the theme of this congregation and I thought it would be only appropriate, especially in the presence of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, to highlight some of our uh, actual position in higher education in the Northeast and the kind of way that we think we have forward, uh, I very quickly and very briefly uh, like to highlight those. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to appreciate the position of higher education in the Northeast, I have to quickly tell you a few facts and figures a little bit of arithmetics, but you wanted to do it, I have done it for you. Uh, first of all, the country has to achieve the gross enrollment ratio of 35 by another, say, uh, six, seven years. Uh, where do we stand at the moment? At the moment, the country average is anywhere 19 or 20. Where do you stand in Northeast? we are below. Where do we stand as far as the sum is concerned? We are around 14. These are figures that one has to know. Uh, in order that you can do anything, including Mr. Hawk, who has dreams, and I pray for you that the dreams come true. Friends, a few more arithmetic are also required to be quickly uh, recollected. Kindly recall the years around 2000, while only thousands of students used to migrate from this region to mega cities. Come to 2005, the numbers went to 35,000. Come to 2010, it came to 150,000. It has been predicted now, these are researched out documents, that by the end of this plan period, there is expected to be five lakhs of students migrating from this region. So friends, those of us, including myself, who are in the business of higher education in this region and in the state of Assam, we must uh, not forget these figures because there is an implication which I'm going to touch upon very, very quickly. What does it mean to us? It means that nearly 1,500 crore every year is getting out, taking 5,000 per student as an expenditure elsewhere. Now, had that money not gone outside, perhaps something good have happened in the region in terms of development, in terms of employment, in terms of smaller business, end of the pipe of entrepreneurship. So this is one thing. Second thing is that 
how many, what percentage of these people are retiring? It is shocking that only 5% of these people that are migrating are retiring. Now the hard question in terms of the higher education in Northeast is that why is it so? And why has it been happening? And why has it been anticipated that is even going to be far more alarming? Well, answer is very simple, and that's what I would like to emphasize to all my colleagues here, the principals. This is a fantastic opportunity Mr. Hawk has provided to share this. Is because poor educational infrastructure facility, socio-political situation, and uh, added to that, extremely important is unemployment. Therefore, these are the points I am sure we have to take seriously, research upon, find solution. Now, this leads me to RUSA, which is yet another part of the theme of this uh, conclave today. Government of India has done its job that other than the centrally funded institutions, the state funded universities and the colleges must be also backed up with appropriate funding and to that end 225 crore has been apportioned which is available in the planning commission as well as in the finance ministry of which 166 <coughs> is the government share and rest has to come from the different states now my point here particularly addressing the principle <coughs> sorry uh, principals, other policy makers, decision makers in the state, in the region, that this RUSA has to be implemented in letter and spirit. If we have to really improve upon the fate of this region in terms of higher education. And I emphasize, we should not leave it alone, all to the hand of the, of the government. And my request to the government I hope there are one or two uh, high officials from the Department of Education of the government of Assam or other states whose presence would have been very important here. Uh, that they, when they try to implement the RUSA program, the Rastriyo Uchidara Shiksha Abhijan, they must involve right kind of people. Politics may be kept away from that. The people who understand, people who mean business, people who can deliver, rather than talks and publicities. Otherwise, things will never happen. And this is one of those fewer opportunities, ladies and gentlemen, my friends from the colleges and other universities representing the principalship, please do take note of it. Uh, I'm going to conclude soon by adding one or two other points which I thought we must share with each other. Uh, unfortunately, the awareness of different opportunities in the country are also not much in our region uh, in the state uh, as well like say for example kbpy what are its benefits why the government of india has been putting so much of money what the students can get out of it the inspire program which started during the tenure of uh, one of my friends who uh, had been the secretary of dstu's term is just over dr ram sami and uh, th this, these are the programs which are directly to benefit our students, uh, not only from this region, but also from elsewhere. So these are to be brought to the attention. Now, going quickly back to catch up with the national goal of achieving the GER, distance education must play a role. However, a caution note has to be applied that distance education has to be monitored well, good amount of face-to-face -face interactions have to be uh, ensured then the distance education will bring what we want to bring because the degrees offered by the recognized uh, distance education centers and the universities are given at par value with the face-to-face -face degrees. The <coughs> next thing is that it is high time that our syllable be looked into and for that my personal request would be not simply for saying sake, that involve the employer in the formation of the syllabus. 
don't assume their mind and make your syllabus, because then the problem will be more or less where it has been. There are also some success stories uh, in direct involvement of the employers. One such example I would like to cite, some of you may know, many may not know, which is on our campus at the Central University at Stagefold. There is an institute called Indian Institute of uh, uh, Indian Statistical Institute. Its northeastern uh, branch is on our campus. We are the facilitator. There is a program which has been designed especially for the students of the northeast. And this program is in collaboration with TCS. And uh, every year, a number of about 60 people are to be taken. They are to be trained, which has already started. And all these people are assured of the job. Now, this is one such very uh, small example, but yet to be taken reckoning of. And I thought uh, these are certain things that have to be uh, considered very seriously so that we can really reap the benefit check the migration, give the employment opportunity, and let us flourish the way the others also have been flourishing. With these few words, I would like to take a leap, thanking you for sure calling up on me and giving me this platform for sharing my views. But having said that, I would like, like to urge upon that these themes that you have taken or some things require much more serious attention and discussion, and I'm sure there will be a forum for doing that. Thank you again, and Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir, for those inspirational words. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to hear the voice of the man who was so loved by the people of India during his tenure as the president that he, was, he lovingly came to be known as the People's President. Ladies and gentlemen, most respectfully and humbly, I'd like to call upon Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, former President of India. Friends, good evening to all of you. I have prepared a lecture for principals, but I found more children are here. So I have to engage them for some time. You don't mind? You don't mind or am I mind? Yes or no? So I can deal with children for some time. Okay? Okay. Now, children, you know, students lift your hand, students lift your hand, all oh, students. You are more than our principals, okay. <laughs> but nice to see all the principals also. <laughs> you know, children, I, I want to give you a theme because I have visited Northeast region, all the eight states, from 2000 to 2007, five years, at least twice every Northeastern state. So I know Northeastern states, geography. I know the people, their ambition, their dreams, and their culture. Now, you are the children of particularly student community. You are the real wealth for the Northeastern region. You must fly. Okay? You must? Repeat with me. I will fly. I am born with potential in Northeastern state. I am born with goodness and trust. I am born with ideas and dreams. I am born with greatness. I am born with confidence. I will win. I will win. 
our nation will win. Our nation will win. I, am I am born with wings. Born with wings. So, so I am not. I am not meant for crawling because I have wings. I fly, I fly, fly. How many of you want to fly? Wish you all the best, okay? Now I am going to talk to principals, okay? So you guys should have to be very nice fellows, okay? Nice fellows? Okay. You know, first of all, let me greet uh, Professor Amir Chowdhury. And uh, according to me, he gave beautiful ideas as a Vice Chancellor of Central University of Tay School. According to me, wherever knowledge, you go and acquire the knowledge, cross the ocean cross the seas, cross the mountains, wherever knowledge, there you have to go. So there is no harm in people traveling for knowledge, flying for knowledge. That is how knowledge excels. What we need is the creation of entrepreneurship opportunity in the North Eastern region. That is you have to allow a lot of entrepreneurs to come here and creating the jobs. Once the creation of jobs happens, then North Eastern State, such a beautiful environment on one side, I see hill, on the side, beautiful forest, so you will have beautiful land. Wish you all the best. Uh, friends, uh, Dr. Mirzal Hazariga, Vice Chancellor of Guwahati University, Professor Steve Mishra, and Dr. N.K. Chowdhury, and uh, my friend Professor Hutt, Chairman, Chancellor USTM, and, uh, and the great uh, announcer Tonmai Bhakavati. And what I thank you for all the people, Ch boy, Santo Sasariga, for giving me the portrait, and poem composed by uh, Nurul Islam Laska, and uh, dear principals and students. <coughs> In the last year, of my presidency, that is in 2007, now it's seven years gone, okay? The Chief of Army at that time, 2007, General J.J. Singh invited me to visit Indo-Chinese border in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. We arrived at the place called Kiputu, name of the place Kiputu, we have to repair huge mountains. And then in a valley, <coughs> Kiputu is there. Where, the Kiputu is the place where Chinese and Indian territories meet. We were in the valley on the Indian side, with mountains reaching the skies around us. On the other side, we could see the Chinese post where a few number of Chinese soldiers have gathered around the post. I looked at our young soldiers and locals who were assembled there. They looked at that Himalayan mountains towering above, just like what I see. I then addressed all the integrated army command there with all the soldiers and officer, I found enthusiasm for the work in difficult situations and gave a readiness to face any challenges from across the border and the weather. When I saw a number of young officers and javans, after my address to them, I asked, I asked the javans and the officers of our integrated command, friends, brave officers and men of India who got in India, I rest that you are working day and night for the peace and safety of the nation and its people. I am proud of you all, I said, as a president. Can the young officers, these guys, silent guys, silent, be silent, you follow? 
हेलो गेट करो कैमरा मैन सही नंबर ऑफ यंग ऑफिसर जवान आप मैं आफ्टर मैं एड्रेस टू दम आई आर फ्रेंड्स ब्रेव ऑफिसर्स एंड मैन ऑफ इंडिया आई रियलाइज दैट यू आर वर्किंग डे एंड नाइट फॉर द पीस एंड सेफ्टी ऑफ द देश एंड द पीपल आई एम प्राउड ऑफ यू ऑल आई सेड कैन द यंग ऑफिसर यंग मैन शेयर विथ मी वन ऑफ यूर मोस्ट चेरिश ड्रीम्स आई आस ऑफिसर आर्मी ऑफिसर Army Jawans, can you share with me one of your most cherished dreams? Other side, Chinese watching. Okay, that's the situation. After some time, a young soldier, I think, is a Jawan, rose up and smartly gave a salute. He didn't forget that, and said in a loud voice, "Sir." my ambition for life is to recover back 30000 square kilometer of the land belonging to us back from chinese and pakistani procession i will fight till my last breath for getting back this land <laughs> <laughs>